So I've been uh, recommended to try front rack holds now for a few days. Um, I've been thinking about it when the best time to do it is. There's no really best time. I come in the midst of a, of a, of a week basically filled with night shit. So I decided to mess around with it today. So you'll see it will come up eventually. Um, but essentially the, the, this idea stems from um, the concept of the upper back helping you in the squat. So you know, I gave the, like the, 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 um, the description before in the previous video about how I believe the upper back can help your back squat. So essentially if you, if you have a really strong hold or really strong rack, um, and the, the, the upper back doesn't round, that means that the mid back has less work to do because it's not fighting against mechanical disadvantage. Um, and then the cascade also goes down to the lower back. So if the whole spine is really strong and not rounding at all at any point, um, that basically translates to potentially hips doing less work because of leverage. So if you really kind of bend at the spine, um, then the whole system gets, you know, poorer structural integrity and then you're working harder and then basically you're living pounds or kilos off the bar. So this is kind of the thinking that I have right now in terms of front squats and how they help the back squat. I know a lot of you guys think that the front squat is only, only like a quad accessory. Um, for me, I've said it a few times now, it's not anything to do with the quads. Like I don't feel quads working at all. For me, it's all about the upper back and mid back. Trying to keep keep that um, thoracic extension, uh, trying to keep the chin up, because uh, really the weight's resting on your collarbone and all it really wants to do is just bend you forward, just roll your shoulders forward. So which musculature is preventing that rolling of shoulders forward? It's your upper back, traps, you know, lats come into it as well, uh, uh, the must. Um, also the, the, you know, the, the lats also contribute to internal rotation of the shoulder, which kind of balances out the external rotation that is required to get into a front rack hold, front, front rack position. Um, so there's a lot going on there, but essentially front squats are getting your back stronger and making your back squat seem lighter. Um, it, it's, it's an interesting concept because, you know, when you think about the back squat, you're thinking about hips and knees, right? You want to extend the, the knees and extend the hip, and that's your squat. But there's a lot of other stuff going on, a lot of stabilization for those joints to do what they need to do. Um, the 205 kilo squat came on the back of me doing some front squats. And by the time I got to 180, 190, 200 or 25, I just felt the weight seemed lighter. That poppy feeling I feel comes from the upper back. Um, it's just the moment I unrack it, I'm like, damn, this is light. This is light. The bar is resting on the back, not on the front. I don't have to fight to keep my uh, you know, thoracic extension. You know, I don't have to do that. So that's basically the, the method I'm thinking with this. Um, and as you guys have seen the last probably four days, I've just done front squats every single day. Um, here I did 140 times one. And I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera. You probably can't. But I'm doing like instead of doing a, a suicide grip or a false grip, I'm doing like a, a thumb around the bar grip, which is kind of making my wrist take more or less pressure um, in a way. So I'm finding it really interesting um, in that position. So it's, it's much, much better. And then, you know, as, as I promised you guys, I, I did front squats. So this is 160. Um, in my head, I'm counting here 10 seconds. Um, 160 felt all right, I guess. Really, the, the trouble here is, man, it's a lot of pressure on your collarbone. Um, I feel like the collarbone is getting minced in this position. Um, same with 180, you'll see 200 here. But essentially, I mean, Man, if you can front rack 200 kilos, 140, 120, 100 is going to feel like a feather. Um, the, I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a matter of conditioning that area, um, like, you know, to get comfortable in the front rack position. It's kind of like, I've said this in the past, it's kind of like the hook grip. The first time you hook grip, you feel like, this, how is this humanly possible? How can this bit of skin hold this much weight? And then over time, as you kind of, you know, continue to spend time with it, you'll understand, like, an absolute best groove to get your hook grip in place it's kind of like that with with this as well um you know 200 kilos is a lot of weight but there's like a little spot i feel like um, i'm finding is the is the most kind of optimal where you can kind of front rack the bar comfortably i mean it's not comfortable nothing in lifting is comfortable um but it's it's doable right you need to find a doable spot um people often think i need to find a you know, like a comfortable position. Lifting is not is not comfortable. Deadlifting is not comfortable. Squatting is not comfortable. It's all about discomfort. It's just the way it is. It's just you need to find the most optimal <laughs> discomfort, I guess, in, in a way. 
Um, then I dropped the bar back down to 140 and did a set of five here. Um, felt really, really, really heavy. I was really surprised to feel the bar heavy on my back. Um, these reps felt slow. I, I was expecting for me to like jump up with this weight, um, but I was kind of fatigued by this point in the workout. Uh, anyway, I got five here. Then I ended up going to 180 times one. Um, hit 161st and then 80 times one, and that was basically the workout. Um, I, I think these pull-ups are doing something to my recovery. Um, they're making my shoulders feel good in the front rack, but I think they're taking something away from me when it comes to the back squat. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just because it's a new stimulus and I'm having trouble kind of catch up with the recovery. Maybe it's also the night shifts. There's a lot of variables happening. This is what I mean about training, man. Right? So much is going on. It's really hard to know what's what. What, what, do, you, what do you attribute what to? Um, but anyway, come in, do the work. Um, tomorrow I'll have, but tonight I've got a night shift. Tomorrow I'll sleep in. Hopefully I get a bit of a you know, better workout. But it's not the most optimal conditions, obviously. Um, it is what it is. But I'm really enjoying the front rack. The front rack is, is something that initially was hurting my shoulders. Um, and now, like, you know, months, months, months down the track, I've kind of, uh, you know, reintroduced the front rack, the front, front squat. And I'm feeling like I'm finding a better groove with it. Um, so I definitely don't uh, use the thumbless grip. I think thumb around the bar is the best. Uh, improves kind of the, the position of the wrist. And I think it makes it easier for the upper back as well. So anyway, I'm just going to continue to learn. Just continue to learn, man. Uh, continue to spend time under the bar. Uh, and just practice, practice, practice. That grease the groove mentality. Just put in that work. Eventually, it will, it will come together. All right, guys. Catch you later. Peace out.